Within ECHO, you can create student groups for a couple different reasons. You can create groups for differentiation or personalization. You can create random groups for student collaboration or for projects. Or you can create strategic groups if you want to test students' collaboration skills or if you want to put them with others they work well with. Either way, groups are a powerful personalization tool. Creating student groups in ECHO allows for each student to have their own personalized table of contents or to-do list. You may have an assignment that only one group of students is to complete because you're trying to push them to dig deeper into the content, or maybe you have a remediation assignment. Either way, you can create all of these assignments in the same place, but choose which group of students see which assignment. Throughout this video, we're going to explore two ways you can use groups. We are going to look at project groups and groups for differentiation. Let's start by looking at project groups. From the home page, I'm going to enter a course that has an existing project. This project is one that students are focusing on studying the history of different states in the Midwest. I'm going to create groups of students for each of these states. Let's get started creating those groups. In the top toolbar, I'm going to click on the Tools icon. From the drop-down menu, I will select Manage Groups. At this point, you can see I have no groups in my course, but I can add them here. In the lower right-hand corner, I'm going to click on this yellow plus sign. When I hover over it, you will see that it says New Group Set. Within the pop-up window, I'm going to fill in all these fields starting with the group prefix. Because this group is for a specific project in relation to states, I'm going to call this group set states. Because I'm going to choose how many groups I will have, I'm going to select fixed number of groups. Because we're focusing on four of the Midwestern states, I'm going to put the number four in for number of groups. Within the group assignment field, I'm going to choose none because I'm going to manually put my students into groups. But from here, if you wanted, you could have students automatically put into groups by choosing one of these many options. I will click generate and now my groups are here. My next step is going to be to name each group. You can keep these names if you like, but since I know that my students are focusing on specific states, I'm going to change them, these groups, hit the check sign when you're done, to match my states. My next step is to put each student into one group according to which state they're focused on. So maybe you might have your students take a survey that shows which state it is they are interested in. Maybe you're going to group them based on how well they work with others. It could be, like I said, on interest, anything. So once you have your students in a group, you can easily change it at any time. If something's not working out or a student really isn't interested in Michigan or the reading material is too difficult or too easy, you can change them at any time to a different group. My next step is going just to be to click Save. Now I need to assign specific activities to each one of my groups. If I come back to my editor tool, I'm going to select the Group Settings tab. Now I'm going to open the folder that has those state tasks in it that I want to assign to the specific state groups. Here I can adjust group visibility. I can choose which group sees which assignment. Because I only want the Indiana group to see the Indiana assignment, I will shut off the visibility to this assignment for the other groups. I'm going to do this for the other states as well. So this is the Indiana assignment. I don't want the Michigan group, the Illinois group, or the Ohio group to see that. This is my Illinois assignment. I don't want Indiana, Michigan, or Ohio to see that. 
I only want Ohio to see this, and I only want Michigan to be able to see this. As soon as this is done, there is no need to save. The updates are saved automatically. Now, each student has a personalized table of contents. Students in, a, in specific groups can only see the task assigned to them. So when students who are in the Indiana group log into ECHO, they will only see this task in their table of contents. Same with all the other groups. The only one that has the eye turned on, that's the only assignment they are going to see in their table of contents. They will not see the other one, these others, just the one that's spe specific to them. All right, now we're going to take a look at doing this, but with differentiation in mind. So this was kind of how we would do it based on project groups. Let's do it based on um, personalization or differentiation. Let's go back to the tools icon located at the top of the toolbar. So we can add a group that has a differentiation focus. Click Manage Groups from the drop-down menu. We're going to add another group set. I'm going to give this group set a name. I'm going to call it ELA for English Language Arts. Again, I'm going to choose a fixed number of groups. I want to have three groups this time, and I am still going to choose none because I want to manually put my kids in groups. Again, you can choose any of these if you want to randomly put them in groups, but since it's for differentiation, we want to make sure we're putting our kids in appropriate groups for what they need. I'm going to hit Generate. Since this is my English Language Arts differentiation group set. I'm going to name these above level. Maybe you could focus on reading level in this case. On level. And below level. Now that my groups are created, I will go through and assign my students accordingly. Again, same with the differentiated groups. Anytime you see the student above level, maybe struggling with the content, you can bump them down. You have a student that's been in below level for a while, but now they're doing better, you can bump them up. Somebody is on on level and they're struggling a bit, you can bump them down. It's as simple as a click. Now that I have all of my students assigned to groups, I'm going to hit save. Now I can see this is my new differentiated group. Now let's go ahead and assign tasks to this using this group of students. Now that I have more than one group, when I go back to my group settings, it's going to look a little different. Let's go back into our editor, click on group settings. Now I have a couple different groups to choose from. I'm going to use my ELA groups. So you can really have your students separated into as many different types of groups as you want. You can have a math group, an ELA group, project group, collaboration groups, whatever you like. So now I have some differentiated assignments here. I labeled them with an A for on, above, I'm sorry, and an O for on, and then this was supposed to be a B for below. If you do not want to make it that obvious for your students, you can code your assignments in different ways. You can use one asterisk, two asterisk, three asterisk. You can name them something completely different. But you're gonna, if they're going to have the same name, you're going to have to do something that helps you understand which assignment is which. So since this is for my above-level kids, I'm going to shut that off for my on and below. This is for my on-level kids. And this is for my below, pretend like that's a B, below-level kids. So I only want them to see it. And that is how you use... Um, groups for differentiation. That was intense, but now you know how to make different types of groups to personalize your students' learning. This is one of the most powerful aspects of ECHO. Have fun creating your groups.